The United Nations votes an air embargo against Iraq. The United States ups the military pressure on Baghdad. And dramatic new pictures from a close encounter with Venus. This is the CBS Evening News. Dan Rattle reporting. Good evening. Iraq. It's never too late. That was the message today in the U.S. Surgeon General's annual report on tobacco. The analysis of statistics found health benefits are, quote, major and immediate, even for smokers who quit at older ages. CBS News medical correspondent Susan Spencer reports. 75-year-old Mildred Perlman quit smoking at age 60, and for a very good reason, a suspicious sore in her mouth. You hit the ceiling, hey? Am I actually going to get cancer? Despite all the scares, 50 million Americans still puff away. The new Surgeon General's urgent message to them, quit, no matter how hard it is or how old you are. If you decide to quit and you're 50, your chances of being alive here in 15 years are advanced by half, so that your chances of dying will be reduced by 50%, half, in the next 15 years. So many lives could be saved that the new report recommends insurance, possibly including Medicare, pay for programs that help people kick the habit. Fear of gaining weight is no excuse. The report says most people add only about five pounds, a small price for reduced risk of disease, of cancer, stroke, lung disease, and especially heart disease. The heart disease risk goes down very quickly. And in fact, within one year after quitting, about half of the excess heart disease risk from smoking is gone. A new public service spot will emphasize that it really is never too late. But you know why I finally did it? Had to do with an upcoming birthday. Yours. Mildred Perlman is sure that quitting has meant a lot more birthdays for her. Today, they tell me that my lungs look like I have never had a cigarette. That doesn't mean it's easy, she says, only that it's worth it. Susan Spencer, CBS News, Washington. Nations closes down the skies in and out of Iraq. Good morning. I'm Mark McCarthy. I'm Tim White. Welcome back to Fox Morning News. We'll be talking live with the President of the UN General Assembly this hour. First news. Thank you, Cheryl. Now 839. For all those people who smoke, the message is simple. It's never too late to kick the habit. According to the U.S. Surgeon General's newest report on tobacco, the health benefits of quitting are substantial. The Surgeon General says people who stop smoking before they turn 50 reduce in half the risk of dying in the next 16 years. And for people who stay off cigarettes for 10 to 15 years, their risk of dying is nearly the same as non-smokers. Joining us now to talk more about the benefits of kicking the habit is Dr. Ronald Davis. He's director of the U.S. Office on Smoking and Health. Thanks for coming in on this important story. 25 years now we've been getting reports on smoking from the Surgeon General. This year you've got a change in strategy. You want to emphasize the positive. Why that change? All the previous reports of the Surgeon General, which have been released since 1964, have focused on the bad news about the damaging health effects of smoking. This report, for the first time, focuses on the good news about the tremendous benefits of quitting. And we found in this 600-page report that quitting smoking reduces a smoker's chances of getting all of the major smoking-related diseases, including cancer, heart disease, stroke, and emphysema. We found that it increases life expectancy to quit smoking, as you pointed out. And we took a close look at weight gain after quitting because a lot of smokers a lot of are concerned. Say, right, they don't want to quit because they'll gain weight. Right? We reviewed 15 studies and found that the average weight gain after quitting is only five pounds, and fewer than four percent of smokers who quit gain more than 20 pounds. So the bottom line in this report is that the enormous health benefits of quitting smoking far outweigh the minimal risk from this small weight gain far outweigh any adverse psychological effects of quitting smoking, which pretty much are gone within the first couple of weeks of quitting. Now this year you also have a special campaign aimed at older smokers. Why is that? Well, we found when we took a look at the evidence that the benefits of, of quitting smoking apply to people who quit at older ages. And one of the myths out there is that if smokers have been quitting for 20 or 30 or 40 
if they've been smoking for 20 or 30 or 40 years or if they're 60 or 65 years old, then they don't have any benefits of quitting. The damage is already done, but the data don't show that. And so we have this campaign with the theme that it's never too late to quit to impress upon the 7 million smokers who are 60 years of age and older that, that, that they too will benefit greatly from quitting smoking. So just because you've been smoking 20, 30 years, you can still improve your health if you quit now. Is that, that's, that's, that's the message? absolutely right, and the benefits begin immediately. Now, by targeting the older people, you're not suggesting, because at one point we saw figures about younger smokers and increasing the increase in women. You're not forgetting about those groups, right? Absolutely not. And uh, the point that we're emphasizing as much as we can is that the earlier you quit, the better. And certainly there are groups, uh, relatively young groups, such as pregnant women, who have enormous benefits from quitting, not only for the sake of their own health, but for the, for the sake of the health of their fetus and their newborn. Okay, it's recognized that it's healthier to quit, and yesterday this came out at the Surgeon General's news conference that for a lot of people who want to get into programs, that, that costs money, and it's not, a lot of it isn't covered by insurance. Why is that? Is that a problem with our system? Well, it's been a double standard that's existed for many years, and while most insurance companies have provided coverage for treatment of other addictions, alcoholism, heroin addiction, cocaine addiction, very few of them provide coverage for treatment of nicotine addiction. And we're saying that now that we've been able to document the enormous health benefits of quitting smoking, and in recognition of the fact that there are many effective programs out there, insurance companies ought to provide coverage for the effective programs to, re to remove the financial obstacle that some smokers face in going to these programs that may help them quit. With all of this evidence, why do people continue to start smoking and to keep on smoking? And how do you break that cycle? Well, certainly a lot of kids take up the habit because uh, there's a lot of peer pressure, their parents may smoke, the advertising with its seductive and glamorous images of smoking can encourage them to take up the habit. And then once they get hooked, uh, the, the nicotine addiction makes it very difficult for many of them to quit. That's what we're trying to break down. Thank you very much, Dr. Ronald Davis. We wish you a lot of luck with that. Tim, over to you. 843 now. Ford announces an Aerostar recall. That's next in Consumer News. And former Carter Administration spokesman Jody Powell joins us to talk about the part that he plays in the Civil War. Stay with me.